Hi, it's Dorothy Guiding with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today I'm here for the Scrapbook Nerd online shop and I'm going to be creating a 12 by 12 layout featuring Vicki Booten's Peppermint Kisses collection. If you're tuning in between December 1st and 3rd, 2023, the Ugly Sweater online crop is happening over on the Facebook group Scrapbook Nerd Friends group, so be sure to head on over. Participants have one week to finish the challenges. I'll put a link to that Facebook group below in case you're interested. If you're too late, no big deal. I'm going to be showing how to create a super easy layered look in minutes. Here's the material I've selected. Everything is from the Peppermint Kisses collection from Vicki Booten, which I absolutely love. And the last time I checked, these products were available at the Scrapbook Nerd, so I am going to link up the shop along with the products I use in the description box below. So let's get started. So now what I want to do is show you what's on my desk. In advance, I prepared a frame style foundation page with two sheets of paper. I gutted one of them. There's a tutorial on my channel where I explain how to do that. So that will be listed and linked below. I just showed you I matted a 4x6 photo of Chester. That was him last December 24th. I've got a bunch of papers here from this Peppermint Kisses collection along with this 12x12 foam sticker sheet. In this tray, I have a bunch of embellishments, and what I'm showing you right there is the contents of the papery pack. It is huge. There are 200 pieces in there, and I did pre-select some of them in those little pots that you see in the front of that clear glass tray. I have some cut-apart tags. I have some puffy titles along with alphas. Those are all from the Peppermint Wishes collection. Those sparkly alphas are from my stash. I don't end up using them. And I also have some chipboard from the Peppermint Kisses collection. So what I'm going to do first is cut up some papers to create a layered photo mat. And this is basically the base for creating a layered look. And it's really, really easy. I'm going to be cutting into four different papers for my layers. I will put measurements for them on the screen a little bit later on when I adhere them to the page. But what I want you to keep in mind is the measurements really aren't important. What's important is that they are all different widths and lengths. I have one that's big that's going to basically be the home for all of it. That's the hexagon paper there. Then I cut out two strips of paper. The green is wider than the red. At this point, I haven't determined the length of these papers yet, but again, I want them all to be different. You're going to see in a moment as well, I did my journaling already in advance and I did it on vellum. So I'm going to incorporate a fourth paper into these layers. Now what I want to do is rip the ends of all of these papers. I know that hexagon one, I want it to be as big as possible, so I'm just trimming off a bit from the bottom, but I'm going to wait for the other two because the length of them is going to depend on other things. My journaling, it's going to depend on my embellishing as well. So there I'm showing you my journaling that I did advance on eight and a half by 11. I just ran it through my home printer and you can see I positioned it towards the bottom of the page and I kind of justified it over onto the right. Now I'm trimming that down. So I'm trimming it in its width, but again, not in the length yet because that's going to depend on where I place my embellishing. So once again, I'm going to place all of this on the page to give you an idea of how my layers are going to look. Again, I will put measurements right now on the screen for these layers, or I will in a moment when I actually tear them down. But keep in mind, what's important here is that all your layers are different widths and different lengths. So if you have different scraps or leftovers on your desk, use them. But the idea is having them different widths and different lengths. So now I am just trying to find a look that's pleasing to my eye, but I do know that in the embellishing, which you can see is all around me now, in that papery pack, there were these long strips that I wanted to use as a shelf underneath. So you're gonna see me get that out in a minute. What you're seeing right now is I'm showing you that off camera, I applied a bit of ink to all of those papers, not the vellum, but the hexagon paper, the red and the green. Now I'm showing you the embellishment. So on this tray is basically a bunch of 
papery pieces. So they are really, really thin. And I have a lot of poinsettias, leaves, some of those wreaths, a few tags, a title, and those strips that I was telling you about that I plan to use as a shelf. I showed you I have tags there. I have those puppy titles. Those are the foam sticker sheet. That's really cute. They're actually not very thick foam, but they are foam stickers. Anyway, what I'm going to do right now is once again, place my pieces on the page. But what I want to do is play around with those strips from the papyri pack that I want to create a shelf underneath my photo. And once I know how much room that shelf is going to take up, then I will know where to cut and where to tear my paper. I will be able to make a decision on how big I want those strips of paper to be. So what I will do is once I'm happy with that, I get out a pencil and I make a few marks. So I make a mark at the top of where that vellum is because I'm gonna cut it straight. And then I'm making a mark at the bottom on the red, green and vellum paper where to tear it. So I'm doing this fairly quickly because I don't have a lot of time today. So usually I check twice, then tear or cut. I'm not doing it this time. I'm having blind faith that it's going to work and it will work just fine. You'll see in a moment. So I have everything torn, I'm trimmed, and now I'm placing it on the page. And again, looking for paper that is different widths and lengths to create a nice layered look. It's a really easy way to create a layered look. So right now I'm putting in those little strips of paper or just playing around with placement. Those strips, by the way, are washi tape stickers. So in those papyri packs, you have like ephemera pieces, but they're really wafer thin and you have washi tape stickers. Now what you see me doing is adhering all of these layers together. I'm not actually adhering the layered mat to the foundation page yet. I'm just creating my layered mat. You may notice when I adhered that vellum down, I placed the adhesive so that it was right in the middle because I knew my photo would be covering up the adhesive because that's the problem with vellum. It kind of shines through. So you always have to find a place to place your adhesive where it doesn't show. So now what I'm going to do is adhere this washi tape strip before I adhere my photo. You're going to see I end up wrecking it a bit. I place it down and then I come in with my ruler and I decide it's like one millimeter off. I lift it up. It's, I'm off camera a bit here. Sorry about that. But I end up tearing it. So what I ended up doing was I stopped the camera. In the papyri packs there are 200 pieces and a hundred different pieces. So there's two of each. So I knew there was another one. I did it off camera and then I did the one on top of it. They're kind of translucent because it's washi tape, but you can see it there. And now what I'm going to do is basically create my embellishments. It's more or less a diagonal design, except I do create a visual triangle. You're going to see you see those rings there, they are like reeks and basically they're washi tape stickers again. So I end up putting those in three spots. You'll see me actually cut one in half because a lot of them are just kind of peeking out from the layers. So I didn't want to waste them. And what I'm doing as well is kind of working in both corners, the top left and the bottom right of the photo with the poinsettias. I'm also coming in with that 24 because this photo was on December 24th. It's really thin for a title, but I do like it because it's easy. Number one, it says 24 and this was all about December 24th and it's easy, right? So you're going to see I work with that a little bit later on. I stopped the camera and what I did was I decided to fussy cut the white edge from around the poinsettias. Now, I have been scrapbooking for nearly 20 years and I never fussy cut. I absolutely hate it. And it's only been in about the last six months. And I think my trick is using these scissors from Tim Holtz, which I will link up below. Many years ago, I watched a tutorial from Laura Alberts on YouTube about fussy cutting. She is a fabulous fussy cutter. And this was one of the scissors that she recommended. 
I will look for that tutorial and I will link it up below. Anyway, I remember listening to it and I still couldn't fussy cut. However, um, what I can say is I'm starting to be able to now and I think like anything, you just have to practice. Nevertheless, Laura Alberts had a fantastic tutorial on fussy cutting. So I will look for it and I will link it below if it's still available on YouTube. You can see I'm now working with my new fussy cut poinsettia pieces and I have those little rings placed in three different areas. I'm also tucking a few things from underneath the layers towards the bottom there. So basically that cluster over on the bottom right kind of hugs that corner in and around the journaling up the right side of the page and I had a smaller embellishment cluster in the top left. Pretty simple design here. What I'm doing right now is making pencil marks on the page where I plan to adhere that layered mat because that is going to determine the placement of these three washi tape rings or partial rings that I'm adhering right now. As you can see, I cut one of them in half, so it's really important that my layered mat covers it up. That's why I kind of placed a pencil mark where I'm going to put it. I have my layered mat loose, but I can move it around, put it back in its proper place, and basically have a guide as to where to adhere these rings. And when they're on the page, because they're washi tape stickers, it really almost looks like a stamped image on there. It's great, especially if you are, you know, you don't have time to do mixed media and you like the look. This is a really great option. Also, I must say, all of these pieces I'm using from the PAP 3 pack are really, really thin. And when creating layered looks. If you don't want your albums to be too bulky, the papery pieces are really great for that. The only thing is you do have to be careful because they're thin, they are more fragile. So that you got to be aware of. I personally love them. So I got my three rings down. Now I adhered the layered mat and all I have to do is come in with these poinsettia pieces here. I do like them better with the white edges trimmed, so I'm happy I did that. So again, just kind of playing around with positioning here. It seems to be taking me quite a bit of time for a very easy layout. I honestly started this project with very little plan in mind. I didn't have much time today and I'm really quite thrilled with how it turned out. I do know I want that 24 as my title. I do have other title options, but the 24, I really like how it looks. However, it is very, very thin, so I'm going to have to back it with something. You may notice as well, I put this little speech bubble towards the bottom. It says, ho, ho, ho. That is going to be overlapped with the 24. Again, part of the Papa Repack. What you see me doing right now is cutting out uh, basically the shape of the title 24. I put it on paper basically backwards, traced a pencil line around it. Now I'm cutting it with those Tim Holtz scissors and I'm just cutting inside my pencil line just so that it doesn't overlap the 24. And that is solidifying that papery piece. And that way I will be able to pop it up on foam adhesive and, you know, make it more title worthy. So that's going to go in that cluster towards the bottom as well. I'm happy with that actually. I'll put some foam adhesive behind it again to make it more title worthy. I am going to want to extend that cluster. So right now what you see me doing is coming in with some leaves, again, part of the PAP repack, and I'm tucking in another poinsettia towards the bottom there. Just uh, right now it's underneath the layers, but later on you're going to come, you're going to, I'm sorry, see me come in and switch it up by lifting up the number 24 and tucking it underneath the number 24. So I'm coming with some of the leaves here and I'm finding them a little big for my cluster so I actually trim some of them down. Um, anyway, these are easy to trim down. It's just a pretty easy shape. It's another thing I want to mention about the um, fussy cutting. 
as much as I'm starting to fussy cut nowadays, I only do it to really, really simple shapes. These poinsettias were really easy because the petals are kind of pointy, but anything really complicated, I just don't bother doing it. And you're gonna see I come in with this ivy leaf. Earlier, I think I showed you in the video, I tried to fussy cut the other ivy leaf and I just gave up. I may continue it later on, but when it's too difficult, I'm not going to do it. But what I realize in practicing, there are a lot of papers and things out there that are pretty easy to fussy cut. And for those ones, I will attempt it, no problem. I do that now, I never would before. It's really, really funny. Anyway, you see me working on that top corner. So this one's gonna be much smaller than the one at the bottom. And that's how I like to create my embellishment clusters. So I have the poinsettia underneath. Underneath that is that washi tape sticker ring. And on top of it, you can see I adhered that holly leaf. And basically off camera, I added two candy canes from that foam sticker sheet and a red bow on top of them. And that came from the Puffy Titles collection. But that is basically it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the Scrapbook Nerd YouTube channel, we would be thrilled if you did. The same thing for my channel, Scrapbooking Quebec. Make sure to check out the Scrapbook Nerd online shop for these fun supplies and lots, lots more. Also, if you're tuning in between December 1st and 9th, 2023, head on over to our Facebook group and check out the crop. Take care and I will see you tomorrow on YouTube. Bye-bye.